Have you seen the Milkman bill yet? It increased again, huh? And is it right? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah. Now we have to vote for Janio. Janio is the only hope of Brazil. Exactly 50 years ago, Jano Quadros became president of Brazil. Its 22nd president is in today's special file program. Janio is the only hope of Brazil. Janio's career was meteoric. In less than 15 years, Janio was city councillor, state deputy, mayor and governor. In his presidential campaign, he preached the public morality and the fight against corruption, using the broom as a symbol. Janio lured the electors with outrageous speeches, amazing gestures and contradictory attitudes. He was a master of the politics marketing and the election of 1960 was the award for this talent. With 48% of the votes, he swept his rivals Ademar de Barros and Henrique Tinchera Lot. Jano Quadros renounced on the seventh month of his term. Hello, this is Eric. Today is March the 31st, 2023. And in this video, we will talk about the Janio Quadros government. Yes, uh, if you watch it, our previous video, uh, you could see JK, the JK government, which, uh, despite having uh, brought about a great development in Brazil, ended up also uh, increasing inflation and many other economic uh, problems in Brazil. Also, there were accusations of uh, corruption in his government, uh, which would have caused him uh, and all the politics at the time to break relations with the FMI, right? And it is in the middle of this chaotic scenario that we have Janio Quadros, right? The, uh, JK actually supported uh, Marshall Lott to be his successor, but Marshall Lott was not, uh, was not really at the same level of Janio Quadros. Janio Quadros had uh, a popular appeal. He was a legitimate representative of populism, this populism that gained an extra strength after the suicide of Getulio Vargas. And so we have Janio Quadros. You know, Janio Quadros, as you could see uh, in the videos uh, that I have just played, uh, he brought uh, this iconic symbol of the, of the broom. So um, the, the Brazilian people was tired of corruption and especially of inflation. And uh, as a master of marketing, Johnny Quadros took advantage of this situation, of this um, popular dissatisfaction, and promised that he would uh, get rid of corruption and that he would bring a new future for the Brazilian nation. But that's not exactly what happened. Uh, and again, uh, it's very interesting to notice that we have João Goulart as vice president again. Yes, and the same João Goulart is going to become the new president after Jânio Quadros, and we will understand why. So Jânio Quadros came from this small party, PTM, supported by UDN, that, oddly enough, uh, usually went against populism, but that ended up uh, supporting Jânio Quadros, a legitimate representative of populism, right? So Jânio Quadros starts... Right? And uh, right after his beginning, his early days, he founded three new ministries. Uh, sorry, two new ministries. Ministry of Industry and Trade and the Ministry of Mines and Energy. Right? He uh, went closer to the IMF. Sorry, I had, to, I had said FMI, right? This is the, the acronym we use here in Brazil. Sorry, IMF. So, uh, yeah, in the JK government, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the administration had broken 
relations with the IMF. And now uh, General Quadros, uh, you know, decides to uh, reapproach the IMF. And the reason is obvious, right? There was a financial crisis established at the country. Inflation was going higher and higher, right? And, um, you know, it even reached during his government 30% per year. We also had the issue of the external debt that was highly increased by the JK management. And we had a budget deficit, that is, we spent more than what we could, uh, that what we could earn and that what, than what we could collect. And, well, for starters, uh, Junior Quadros decided to work on this uh, inflationary issue, right? He decided to cut public spending and he decided to also uh, offer less credit. And for some reason, he also decided to freeze the wages. So uh, that aroused way too much dissatisfaction from workers, as you could probably imagine. He also established uh, a limitation for remittance of profits abroad. All of that, for what reason? To incentive the, the, the local, the, the national industry, right? Um, but the fact is that, uh, in, in spite of his efforts, we had currency devaluation, right? And that ended up being a total failure. And you know, obviously we had this economic crisis uh, now even worse. So among all these problems, Johnny Quadros, you know, in his meteoric government, yeah, because he's staying in power only for seven months, he, you know, we were, uh, you know, in the Cold War days. And here we see in this photo, Johnny Quadros decorating Ernesto Guevara with the Order of the Southern Cross. One of the greatest awards, you know, that the, the, the Brazilian politics uh, could offer someone. So <laughs> the United States was probably looking at that and said, what? Because this is the guy that helped socialists be established in Cuba a little more than 100 kilometers away from the United States. So the society, the Brazilian society and the USA were looking at that and is he a communist? But yeah, that's not all. Oh, sorry, uh, I forgot to translate this part here, guys, but I'm going to translate it to you here. Historical context, Cold War, objective, expanding the external market for the Brazilian product. Yeah, that's, that was the idea, but it was really crazy to act like that in, in, in this chaotic uh, foreign scenario that you know, Brazil and, and the whole world was living in at that time. And uh, if you watched our previous video, you remember that JK really worked uh, hand in hand with the American uh, interests. Now he was simply uh, getting rid of America. And not only that, he was really getting closer and closer to the socialism, uh, you know, to the so, uh, so uh, obscure socialism or communism. So, uh, you know, he resumed diplomatic relations with the socialist bloc. Sorry, there is a, a K here missing. Uh, he did not support the U.S. in expelling Cuba from the OAS. And to finish it off, he decorated not, not only Che Guevara, but also Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin in, in a time when America and the Soviet Union were fighting uh, to get to the moon first. You know, so really, he was out of this world. Uh, for all of these reasons, and not only for that, but also for other unpopular measures that we're going to see here, such as ban on cockfighting. You know, I don't like this kind of thing either, but it was very popular. Uh, uh, you know, this uh, cockfighting thing was really popular in Brazil at the time. 
for such an unpopular president like he was, you know, doing a kind of thing was like suicide. You know, he also uh, banned poppers, amyl nitrate. Uh, you know that were uh, pretty much used in carnival, which, which is also something that that I don't like. But uh, you know, carnival was another popular celebration in Brazil at the time. So he was more and more accumulating popular dissatisfaction against him. But that's not all. He also banned bikini wearing on the excuse that that went against the morals of the Brazilian family, of the Brazilian conservative family. And you can guess what that uh, you know, brought him, more dissatisfaction. And to cap that off, he also banned horse racing on business days. Yeah, so the other days are okay for horse racing. Oh, come on, give me a break. So for all of that, he accumulated so much in popularity that it became impossible uh, for him to remain as president. He, he managed what no other president in the history of the nation managed to do. He became unpopular in every single level of society. You know, you had uh, the bourgeoisie, you had the armed forces, you had the Catholics, and you had the workers. Absolutely everyone against him. But for some reason, Gianni Quadro still believed that he was popular. And he tried his last trick. He said, okay, I'm going to resign. And the, the Brazilian people is going to embrace me. And my opposition, which he thought that was wholly political. So he, he went like, oh, so my uh, po political uh, opposition, they are going to have to yield. They are going to have to give in because the people is going to proclaim me as their leader. <laughs> but that's not what happened. On August 25th, 1961, Johnny Quadros resigned and <laughs> unfortunately for him, yeah, the people really thanked him for that decision. And that's the end of another really troubled populist government. Okay, in our next video, we will talk about uh, the sequence of the Brazilian politics, right, with João Goulart. Right, thank you so much for your attention and see you in our next video.